Hey guys, Chemical Master back here with another video for you today. And this just showed up in the mail. I actually bought this off eBay. They had three of them for sale in box like this. This is not all real original. They were sent off to be remanufactured at some point and came back and then they didn't ever use them. So I have an original boxed computer terminal. And I thought maybe it would be interesting to open it up on camera and take a look at what's all inside here. Same as I did with the CompuDyne a couple, well, I guess over a year ago now. This is an Esprit serial communication terminal, the 125C. Now, I'm going to actually cut the box open off camera because my address is on top of the box and I don't want to like leak that out, but I thought maybe, maybe it would be neat to take a look at. Well, it certainly smells like the 90s in there. Ooh, major savings inside. And that's the bottom of it. I guess I have the package upside down. Or maybe this is how it was supposed to be shipped. Ooh, it's a color terminal. I didn't realize it was color. Major savings inside. And this is actually an Esprit catalog, I think. Or Esprit. Esprit Systems Incorporated, 2115 Ringwood Avenue. I wonder if this company is still existing. Esprit Express Unit, which has been especially prepared for you. Condition of your warranty and by the terms so you repack your old unit, yep. Must be returned within three days. Fourteen working days of your receipt. Invoice you for the cost of this terminal. Interesting. I've never seen that before. I guess there was like I said, I'm pretty sure that they were sent off to be remanufactured and then they never used them. So in fact, they never even cut the tape on the box. Literally, my shipping sticker was stamped over the original yellowed packing tape. So, let me go ahead and get this out of the box, because, or actually, rather move the box somewhere where I can lift it out. And we'll have a look what's inside. It turns out it wasn't upside down. The base is just made as a separate piece. And there it is. Attention, in the course of repairing your terminal, it has been reset to the factory default setup conditions. The setup sections must be redone before the unit can be used. Please refer to setup instructions in the user's guide or ask your computer department for assistance. If necessary, you may call Esprit Systems Technical Support. Thank you. So, here's the keyboard. Eh, it's alright. It's not the best keyboard I've ever felt, but it's an alright keyboard. It has extra keys, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Oh, it has, wow. I went to F20. I purchased this for an upcoming project I'm working on that will involve this in some way. But yeah. Ooh, additional productivity tool. Opus terminals feature a host of productivity tools that include Rolodex. Interesting, maybe it's got like its own operating system built into it. Very interesting. You can see already the inside with the precious terminal. Let me lift this out for you. So in the bottom, actually, I found the power cord, which is supposed to sit in this little tray on top. Very interesting design. It was actually still plastic wrapped and everything. I had to cut the plastic wrap to get it out of there. The, uh, the seller on eBay made mention that these were all remanufactured in 1996 is when they got them. So that means that this terminal has been sitting around since 1996 untouched in theory now i don't know about you but low radiation made me laugh when i saw it we are gonna plug this in we're gonna hook this sucker up we're gonna see what she does because boy this is just impressive i mean that is brand new main port a auxiliary port b keyboard Maybe this is for a battery. Don't know. Made in Taiwan for Esprit Systems. I don't know. I should just mention, I don't know anything about this terminal other than it was part of a set that was bought in 1996 and then never used. Pull this little door off. Oh, wow. Tape is still over the CR2032 in there, too. Wow, that's incredible. 
I wonder if that battery's still good. Sitting like that may have saved it. Wow, okay. Well, we'll have to have a look at that later as well. Maybe later in this video, maybe in another video. This is just, this is just incredible. There's not a lot. To, I, I would be giving a tour like I was with the Compudine, but there's not a lot to show off. It's just a color terminal, little serial terminal. But we're gonna we're gonna hook this up and see what she does, and we'll get right back to you. So actually, on further inspection, it looks like maybe they changed their number at some point. But I'm getting everything unpacked and everything is all sitting where it needs to be now. On second thought, the keyboard is actually pretty nice. But we are going to actually open up this manual and have a look inside here. Wow, that's the first time that's ever been done. Major savings inside. Limited warranty registration for years. Three, one, two, five, seven, nine. You know, I wonder if I fill this out and send this in. Will anyone respond? Turn on keyboard for warranty service. Return this card to speak within 30 days of oh yeah, that's way out. Figure fifty dollars. Yeah, give me a hundred give me a, I'll send you a hundred dollars for four years of warranty on this thing. I will do that. <clears throat> 48 continuous states. Warranty includes dead and arrival protection. Return procedure. This is useless, but it's interesting to look at. All the paperwork's going back in this bag to stay in this bag. Here is the installation guide. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Low radiation. Oh, that made me laugh the first time I saw it. Following the trend in the computer market towards low radiation, this equipment has been tested and found to comply with Swedish regulatory agency guidelines. Swedish? Very real health hazard to users. And this has come as great concern to many people. Interesting. Well, here's the installation guide. We have all the things now. So we ought to read this first before we install it, right? Read all these instructions. Save these instructions for later use. Do not use this product near water. Unstable cart stand or table. Gotcha. Serious damage. Gotcha. Slots and openings. Ventilation. Cool. Not be blocked. Awesome. I've actually already put that on. Plug in the keyboard is the next thing. Connect it to whatever you're going to connect it to. Plug in the power cord. Turn it on. Wow, this is all really simple instructions, isn't it? Place a terminal in the desired work area. Ensure that the air can circulate freely on the base. Power switch to on by pushing it in. Light should line up. Hold the Alt key. A window with four fields will appear on the screen. This is going to be like setting up adjustment and stuff. Wow. The pinout for the <laughs> for the RS-232 cables. Interesting that they provide pinouts for it. But I guess next is plug it in and test it. Well, everything is hooked up. Time to uh, bite the bolt and just do it. Light on the keyboard, buzzer inside. Ooh, fancy. A little bit out of focus. Not on the camera, but on the CRT. Yeah, if you can see what I mean there. It's kind of fuzzy on the, tu on the tube. So what we should do is adjust the brightness and contrast. Contrast is white level, brightness is black level. So we want the black to be black, and we want the white to be white. And everything else down here is digital. 
So that's left. That's right. This would be wider, narrower, taller, shorter, up, down, and then reset the defaults. So they said hold alt on startup. I'm gonna try and do that. This is gonna be a little bit difficult to do with one hand, but we'll hold alt. No difference. The focus is improved. I don't really have anything to do with this right now. A 910926. I don't really have anything hooked up. I should probably hook up a modem or something, shouldn't I? Let me try and do that right quick. I figured while I was looking at getting some of the cables for this set up, I'd give you guys a look at a future video project. All right, it took a while. I had to go through three modems, and I had to use not a psychopathic amount of adapters, but a couple adapters nonetheless, and had to dig through and find the power brick for this, but the almighty contraption works. Get this thing booted back up. Turn that modem on. AT, so it's okay. Oops, it was still initializing. AT, so it's okay. You got the echo back, so we know it's good. We're going to dial them to the level 29 BBS here. D, and it is 916. Nine. Oh, come on, listen, you. 916. 965. And this is a US robotic. I think it's a Sportster modem, something like that. It is a 56K modem, but I couldn't get my 1200 baud modem to work. Yay, level 29. Uh, I have an account, but we'll just go as visitor for now. Uh, I think this is actually 40 by 25. Oops. 25, sorry. Give me the two. Not a fast connection here. Dumb, yes. It is a dumb terminal. Oh, sorry. I accidentally did it. I believe this can handle ANC, but... Yay, call our runner 82 for today. Let's see here. Let's just read the new messages. I don't know, it doesn't matter. It just shows just wanted to show that it was working. Let me find a more interesting BBS to play with. All right, we're going to dial into the diamond mine here, which is a Commodore 64 BBS. Try to, at least. Nope. It doesn't want to right now. Hold on. Going to reinitialize that. Okay, there's the okay, ATD, let's see here. Oops. I'm noticing that this keyboard is suffering from age quite badly. Come on, give me the nine. 
or it might be a problem with the terminal. Who knows? There it goes. Awesome. ASCII detected. We have color. Supposedly we have color. That doesn't look like color. Um, let's go for disconnect. I don't think this does ANSI emulation so much as it is just a color monitor. Give me the disconnect. It is. Yep. Gotta love these things. Ooh, there it is, Diamond Mine. Um. Let's go for guest. Let's say yes. No, no mouse reporting. Yeah, no. There is no, uh... Yeah, there's no ANSI on this. Is there a reset button on this somewhere so I don't have to keep resetting it? Try the MST time server. D three oh three four nine four four seven seven four. I was really hoping that we would get to see a demonstration of the uh, the color. But this is fine. So there's kind of something neat for you. At least we got something kind of neat out of this. At the end of the day, it really is just a dumb terminal. This is going to be used for a completely different purpose than this anyways. Um, I'm building something that will utilize this as the input device. But that's for another video. Well, once this disconnects after a few seconds, we'll go ahead and end the video there. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching, and have a good night.